Hello again. In this second video, we're going to start taking a look at complex integrals. And we're going to do so by looking at what's probably the simplest kind of a complex integral. It's an integral that looks like this. Now take a second to look at that. You'll notice here that we have a, a function. It is a, a complex valued function uh, because we do have that i in there. But as you look at it a little bit, little bit more closely, you'll see that there's something a little bit odd. We have uh, 0 and 4 as limits and we're integrating with respect to t, which is usually used to represent a real variable. And in fact, this is an integral. It's a complex valued function, but it's defined just in terms of a single real variable. Now, how do we evaluate an integral like this? When would we actually run into this? We'll answer these questions uh, right now. To evaluate an integral like this, we make a, a choice, a definition. And here's the definition. We'll say that if we're evaluating the integral of a function like this with real and imaginary parts of a single real variable, the integral will be defined as just the integral of the real part plus i times the integral of the imaginary part. All right, so you can imagine that we just kind of split the integral of f up into, into these two integrals and factor the i out of the second integral. That's what our definition is. Now, if we were to take this definition and we were to apply it to this integral, what we'll do is, as before, we're just going to split the real and the imaginary parts up into their own integrals. We'll put the i in front of the uh, this integral, and then we'll, we'll do what we normally do. We'll use the uh, fundamental theorem of calculus. Uh, we'll take the antiderivative of these two functions. We'll evaluate at the endpoints and subtract. And when we do that, we'll end up with an answer of 64 thirds plus i times 16 thirds. Now hopefully that wasn't very difficult. These really are the simplest kind of integrals you'll run into. Now if they are though, what's the value in learning about them? When would we ever need to do this kind of integral? Well, if you look at the uh, textbook, you'll see that not many integrals look like this. But the answer is, actually, we're going to use these kinds of integrals all the time. Because what we'll do, when we run into a contour integral like this, like the kind that you'll see if you just skim through the exercises for this action, we're going to, as you'll see in the future videos, trade this integral for a version that is written in terms of a parameter variable t. Now that parameter variable is going to run from a to, to b, a, a, an initial value to a final value. The uh, inside of the integral had real and imaginary parts, but our parameter variable is going to be a real variable. And so we'll be in exactly this situation once we swap our original integral for a parameterized version. And then we'll just uh, finish the problem by evalu evaluating this kind of, of integral. All right, well, that's uh, how to evaluate these kinds of integrals. In the next video, we'll start taking a look at actual contour integrals, and we'll see the process in action.